Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. South African Airways this week revealed details of the outcome of a 90-day action plan to return the carrier to stability. Keith Campbell joins me to discuss these outcomes. Hi, Keith. Why did SAA embark on this 90-day action plan? Basically because they were in a desperate situation. In the, uh, the words uh, of the acting chief executive officer, Nico Bezidenhout, uh, at the press conference announcing the results of the action plan. Uh, in December last year, SAA was effectively not a going concern. So uh, the, the airline was in a desperate situation and urgent action had to be taken to try and stabilize it. What were some of the gains achieved during the three months um, of this action plan? Well, they, they set a series of objectives for themselves when they launched the action plan and they give uh, a briefing to the media about the action plan before they started it, uh, setting out what they hope to achieve. And they appear to have achieved everything that they set out to achieve or nearly everything. Uh, a key uh, target was to cut costs by one and a quarter billion rand. And this they've managed to do. In fact, they seem to have slightly exceeded the target. It seems that they have managed to cut costs by 1.28 billion rand. Although I'm, I must point out that these savings come into effect in this current financial year, which started on April the 1st. So they don't affect the results uh, from uh, last year. They uh, reviewed and uh, rectified the uh, airline's route network. That saved something like 440 million rands because they dropped uh, loss-making uh, routes to Beijing and Mumbai. Uh, but before the routes were terminated, SAA reached agreement with Air China, uh, under which Air China now runs the route from Beijing to Johannesburg, so the direct connection remains. And they also uh, reached an agreement with Etihad of Abu Dhabi. And SAA now flies every day to Abu Dhabi, and passengers can then connect via Etihad, not to Mumbai, but to Mumbai and 14 other cities in India. So uh, again, although there's no longer a direct route, it's an indirect via Abu Dhabi, there's now much more uh, choice available to traffic uh, tra um, the travelers uh, traveling from South Africa to India. So th those are two examples. They renegotiated leases on some of their aircraft, reduced costs. Uh, they underwent a major renegotiation with Airbus over an aircraft acquisition uh, contract, uh, which has been a problem since 2002. It's a long, complicated story, but basically uh, in 2002, SAA agreed to buy 15 uh, A320 single aisle on narrow body airlines from Airbus. Uh, I think in 2007 that was renegotiated to increase the number to 20. And now it's been re-renegotiated and the number's been reduced to the 10 aircraft that have already been delivered. And instead of getting the other 10, uh, they will SAA will be getting five A330 wide-body airliners instead. Now, now, the key part of this contract was that somehow SAA uh, was paying a premium on the price of the A320s. So every time uh, the A320 was delivered to South African Airways, the company had to take an immediate impairment on its accounts because the plane was bought at a premium, not at market value. Uh, the A330s will be calculated at market value. So there'll be no impairment on the airline's accounts when they arrive, and they are the type of aircraft the airline needs for its uh, future planned operations. There was also renegotiation of procurement contracts, uh, cutting costs there, and SAA is going to expect its suppliers will cut costs even further when contracts are renewed. Uh, 
acting CEO Poseidon had talked about a 15 percent cut uh, if suppliers want to maintain their contracts, extend their contracts with SAA. And they're currently also involved in renegotiating the debt of the airline to try and reduce the heavy uh, burden of interest payments because the airline is very heavily indebted at the moment. So these are a number of the things that they've done under the 90-day action plan. What will SAA do going forward to ensure that it maintains this stability? Well, uh, a point to uh, clarify at the moment, of course, is that the 90-day action plan was not a turnaround plan. It was a plan to get SAA into a position in which the turnaround strategy can be started. So now they're moving into the turnaround strategy, what they call the long-term turnaround strategy. Now, as part of this, they are developing, effectively they've developed, but it hasn't been, I think, officially uh, okayed by the government yet, because SA, of course, is state-owned, a three-year corporate plan. Uh, this is based on the pre-existing long-term turnaround plan, which they have reviewed and uh, updated to deal with changes in circumstance. Uh, and they've taken input from National Treasury, which is now the shareholder, the government shareholder in SAA. Uh, taking their advice and their analysis aboard. And from these, uh, another source of information, they have developed the three-year corporate plan. And the, this, uh, present I pointed out, is standard business procedure. All businesses have corporate plans. And the three-year corporate plan is pretty standard in South African state-owned companies. So they're establishing a normal planning cycle to take the airline forward. They are also uh, focusing on African routes. Uh, African routes have always been profitable for SAA. On the domestic front, SAA is going to continue to operate as SAA, but it's clear that Mango, the low-cost subsidiary of SAA, will be playing a bigger role in the domestic uh, market. And in the international uh, arena, there are no plans to cut any further international routes yet. Uh, as I say, the very heavily loss making Beijing and Mumbai routes have alre already been stopped. So that is uh, basically uh, the route forward they're going to take. Uh, Mango, by the way, part of the SAA group, is profitable and uh, improved its profitability last year in comparison to the previous year by about 10%. Another key subsidiary of SAA is SAA Technical, which is kind of break even at the moment. It has made a profit in the recent past, in the 2013-2014 financial year. At the moment, it's break even, and Bezernhut would like to make it more profitable so we can expect uh, some uh, reforms uh, and uh, changes within SAA Technical to entrench it uh, on the profitability side of the ledger. Thank you. That's the Second Take Show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.